Unless you have a 5-axis laser tube cutter, the best way to notch tubing is with a hole saw in the mill. To be able to align the notches at either ends of the tube on, with round tube, I use these square split blocks. You stick them on the ends of the tube and tighten them down while laying on a flat surface so they're aligned to each other. You can then hold them in the mill and notch both ends and the notches will be aligned to each other. Once I got my tubes bent and notched, I put them in the jig and tightened the clamping screws. And I leave my blocks on while test fitting the tubes in the jig just in case I have to put it back in the mill and take a little more off. With the blocks on, uh, you can put it back in the mill without losing your reference. This tube's a bit long, so I put it back in the mill and shave off about 10 to 15 foul. Then stick it back in the jig. And it's just right. These tubes are all inch and an eighth by 065 wall chromoly, and I get most of my chromoly from Wix Aircraft. They have a they have a pretty good selection of chromoly tubing. So next, I stick in my axle hangers, chain tensioner mounts, and the grip and slide lever mount. And again, um, just simply setting the blocks on top of an outline of themselves and then uh, bolting them up from the bottom. Just need to do a little more tube notching in the mill on uh, this brace here. And here's the frame complete with all the parts on it ready to be welded up. Talked to my secretary yesterday. Yes. <laughs> that was probably weird. Because the frame can't easily be welded on the bottom side, it's just tack welded in the jig and then pulled out and fully welded. It's just lost with three the intersections this year. That looked that way. You only want to tack or weld on sides that you can also tack or weld on the opposite side of to minimize warping when the frame is pulled out of the jig. You oh yeah. Oh yeah. Opposite of everything and put more tax.
before I weld on the head tube and down tube, uh, I want to check the frame to make sure that it's flat. I put the frame on a flat steel table with one, two, three blocks under the four corners. This frame is out a little over a sixteenth of an inch from corner to corner. So I pull out the one, two, three blocks from the two high corners and pull down on uh, them with plates threaded into the table. It's within about 10 thou now, corner to corner. So I check the middle sections of the frame, um, especially where the axle hangers are because they're probably the most important part to have flat. The head tube I'll make from inch and a half by 095 wall chromoly. And all that really needs to be done is machine the bore for the headset cups. And if we look at Keen Creek's uh, head tube spec guide, they say 33.95 millimeters or 1.337 inches for inch and an eighth uh, standard head tube. The cups measure out at about 1.341, which gives you about a four thousandths press fit. And I personally like to go a little looser than this, so I shoot for about 1.338 or 33.99 millimeters. Um, it makes it a little easier to get your cups out if you need to change your headset. One thing you have to think about is head tube distortion from welding. When you weld on the head tube, it ovalizes a certain amount. The correct way to deal with this is to machine your head tube slightly undersize and then ream it to the final size after welding with a head tube reamer facer, which is what this is. Um, these tools, though, are expensive. They're about four to $500, so most garage builders are not going to use these. And so what I'm going to do for this head tube is I'm going to machine it to final size on the lathe. Um, I've got about an inch um, between where I'm welding and the end of the head tube. Um, and so there's the bore. So I'm not going to be actually welding on the bore itself. So it should be fine. Um, if you were welding uh, right on the very end of the head tube, and then you should probably ream after welding. I also use these brass heatsink plugs that are the same size as the headset cups but with a slight taper uh, that I tap into the head tube before welding and these definitely help uh, keep the head tube round. So next I'll weld on the head tube and down tube um, and I'm just using this plate and blocks that I had left over from another project to hold the head tube in proper location. And so now the frame is uh, all finished and it's ready to start assembling parts on.
For front wheel, I'm using an old Zero motorcycle rim. It's a, a rear rim that I have left over. Um, so what it is, is it's a 20 inch BMX rim with a 135 millimeter wide mountain bike hub and a 14 millimeter BMX axle. So I will have to make my own fork for it. This is the uh, fork crown here. Um, that I'm going to be machining from solid aluminum and I'm using uh, pinch bolts for the for the legs and, and for the stem here uh, just so I don't have to do any welding on it. This is machining on the fork crown. Here I'm uh, rounding the ends on a homemade lever operated rotary table. So for the fork legs, I made up this jig that holds the, the fork tubes, um, the dropout, and the brake hanger um, in the correct positions to be welded. And the, uh, the fork tube is inch and a quarter by 06 Firewall Chrome Ollie. I'm using rollers to tension all four of the chains. Um, I like to make my chain rollers out of skateboard wheels because I can make them whatever diameter I want and I can machine a groove uh, the right width for the uh, chain that I'm using and, uh, they're, and they're also cheap. These are the blank sprockets I get from Azusa Engineering. I made this fixture plate for drilling the hole patterns I need. Uh, it references the center hole of the sprocket but then I drill them out to the whole pattern of these wheel hubs. Another thing I do is chamfer off the edges of my plastic sleeves so they drift better on rough surfaces. Uh, you can do this by simply mounting the tire and the axle and putting it on the lathe. Got my axles and chains on and rotating. This is the hub that the plastic wheel mounts on. This is a chain guide that I put on to help keep the chain from coming off the engine sprocket if it gets loose. So the engine chain uh, comes back here, goes under the idler sprocket and goes to the back axle. Then this chain goes from the back axle back up to the jack shaft. Then the outer chains here uh, go from the jack shaft back to the stub axles where the plastic wheels will mount. All right, so in part four, we're going to finish up with the controls and then we're gonna take this thing out for a spin.